Good morning. Welcome to Victory Baptist Church today. Let's all get a songbook stand and turn to page 101. Page 101. Welcome each and every one of you to Victory Baptist Church. We're so glad to see all of you today. Welcome all of our visitors. Thank you for coming, being here this morning. Welcome those who are listening by way of radio, those who are watching by live stream. We're certainly glad you tuned our way today, trusting that God will meet with us and help us, amen, this morning. And as we go to the Lord in prayer, let's do pray for the service, pray that God's will be done in all of our hearts and all of our lives, and we'll just open up and let God do a work in us, amen. Thank you for the good meeting this past week. Thank God for what he did each night. And I appreciate what the Lord did in my own heart this week. Amen. And let's continue to pray. The Lord will continue to work. Uh, and we can see others come to know Christ. See God continue to stir his people. And uh, so let's pray this morning. Let's do also remember those that are lost. God will deal with their hearts. Also continue to pray. Uh, for Victor Christian School. We're down to the last few weeks of this school year. So pray much for our staff and their families and our students and their families. Pray for those who will be graduating this year and that God will direct their lives and God will give them uh, that which they need, amen, uh, for the future. So let's pray for our school, also our troops and our missionaries, remembering all of them today in prayer. Also uh, pray for Brother Jack Mary. He's not feeling well this morning. 
uh, Junior Stevenson, David Morgan, Amy Napier, uh, Jacob Boyd, Tammy Wattenbarger, Carmela Whitaker, uh, Joanne Oakley, and uh, Kathy O'Brien, Natalie Stainback, Ann Siemens, Sharon Dickerson, Patsy McDonald, Cindy Weaver, Amanda Armstrong, Susan Norris, Marsha Raines, uh, David Williams, and uh, Dale Dix Nixon. I remember all of these today. Also, congratulations to Shad and Lisa Joe. Uh, another grandbaby was born this week, and uh, we uh, congratulate them on that. Uh, I hate to say little girl, because she was a, a nine pound, two ounce little girl, amen. Glad her and mom's doing well, so just pray for them, amen. We thank the Lord for answered prayer. Also, continue to pray for Marvin Robertson, John Matthews, James and Beulah Edwards, Pat Matthews, Ellen Thompson, Sarah Gupton, Dwayne and Judy Combs, and John and Wanda Newcomb. So let's pray this morning. Pray for the choir today, the special singing. Everything that's said and done, the Lord will be glorified and honored through it all. Amen. And uh, so let's bow for prayer. I'm going to get Brother Mark if he will to come. Pray for us this morning as he leads us to the Lord in prayer. Let's just all pray together. Amen. Good to see you. Father in heaven, we come to you today and just in awe of the love and the mercy and the grace that you give to us each and every day, Lord. We're so undeserving. We fail you so often, and you never fail us. Pray that you'll bless in the service, Lord. We pray that you'll give the preacher the words we need to hear. Lord, help our hearts and our minds and our ears be open to what the Holy Spirit has for each and every one of us. Lord, there's so many folks here that need you, Lord. We pray that you'll just work in hearts and lives, Lord. We pray that you'll bless. Lord, we pray for our church, our church family, Lord. We're, we love them. We care for them. We pray for the ones who aren't able to be here. Pray that you'll touch them, heal them if they're sick, Lord, and just be with them. Lord, we love you and thank you for all you do. Pray that you'll give us a good day to, today, and uh, Lord, bless in both services, Lord, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
ministers to come and receive our morning offering as we worship through our giving. I'm going to make mention of a couple of things. Uh, of course, uh, this coming Wednesday night will be youth night uh, at uh, Victory. So uh, this coming Wednesday night, 730, everybody will meet here in the, the sanctuary. And our young people will be doing uh, the service, amen, that night. And we've been doing that once a month. And I tell you, these months are going by fast. And... Uh, because uh, this is the last, this coming Wednesday will be the last Wednesday of this month, I think it is. And uh, so we're looking forward to that on Wednesday night, 730. And then on May the 7th is the Mother's Dinner. And that'll be at the Fellowship Hall from 6 to 8 p.m. And uh, all the moms and everyone's invited for that. And uh, so if you could let uh, Spring know by the 28th of April, which is by next Sunday, uh, whether you're coming or not. I know many of you have already uh, saw it on Facebook where you told her you'd be coming, but if you have not done so, of course, she's not here this morning due to her and Tim having to go out of town for a funeral, and uh, so you can let Debbie know, and she can uh, let Spring know about that. That's on May the 7th, Mother's Dinner. That'll start at 6 o'clock. And then Mother's Day is May the 12th. And uh, so if you would like to order flowers, uh, you need to do so by May the 5th. And so be sure to write down your mother's name and then how many flowers you want. There'll be $2 each for each flower that you would like to purchase. All right, well, let's pray and ask God to bless the offering this morning, the remainder of the service today, that the Lord's will be done. I'm going to get Brother... Shad, the newest grandpa here in the building. <laughs> Amen. Pray for us this morning, brother. God bless you. I believe it's Genevieve Isadora. And I think my wife's already on her Evie. So. It's either going to be a Jenna or Evie at that, with that name, right? Um, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, just thank you for your blessings, Lord. You've been so good to us. Thank you for your love, Lord, and just thank you for yes. that peace and joy that no matter what's going on in this world, we can have that peace and joy in our heart. And Lord, just pray that you have your hand upon Israel. Lord, strengthen them, prepare them for the days to come. And Lord, have your hand yes. upon your church, Lord. And strengthen us also and just help us to shine more brightly as the world gets darker. And Lord, just pray that you take and uh, bless this offering, Lord, and, and stir up our hearts, Lord, and just uh, prepare us for the message today. Be with the preacher, Lord. Just, uh, Lord, let your Holy Spirit have its work in our hearts. And Lord, just be with the singing and be with everything we do in your name. Lord, have your hand upon this church, upon this body of believers, and upon us. And Lord, and bless all that we do in your name. And Lord, just all these things I ask in the name of Jesus, my Savior. Amen. Amen. Appreciate that this morning. All right, we're going to get Brother Chris to come sing for us. He's going to sing one for us, and then uh, Brooke and her family's going to sing one for us this morning. We'll pray for them. Pray for all the mechanical issues that we have. Amen.
one. Thought I've had it all this week. It's uh, kind of comes from Book Romans. Uh, it says uh, that God commendeth His love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, sinners, Christ died for us. And I'm not sure that I could uh, explain why He loves us, especially somebody like me. But uh, um, this song tries to capture a little bit of that and see if I can get through it. Here's some questions about this thing. How many men can read and understand? Sometimes my faith is weak. Satan tries to fill my heart with doubt. Sometimes I just can't help but sit and wonder what it's really hard.
gave us. If you have your Bible this morning, why don't you turn with us to the book of uh, John, chapter number 21. John, chapter number 21. This morning, I want to read just a few verses and try to bring what I feel like the Lord would have me to preach this morning. In John, chapter number 21, I want to begin reading in verse number 15. The Bible says, So when they had dined, Jesus saith to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my lambs. He saith to him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my sheep. He saith unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, Lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee, and Jesus saith unto him, Feed my sheep. Our Heavenly Father, as we bow this morning, we thank you for the privilege again that we have to gather here in your house this morning. Thankful, Father, for all that we have already heard, and Lord, what we've already felt in our hearts today. And God, I pray that just for a few minutes this morning that you might Help us as we once again look into the precious Word of God. Lord, that our hearts would be open and receptive to the Word. God, that you would speak to those here in the building, those who are listening, and those who are watching. I'm glad, God, that you're not confined to four walls. I'm glad, God, you can work through the airways, Lord, as we preach the Word. God, may your will be accomplished is our prayer. And Father, everything that's done, we'll thank you, we'll praise you, for we ask it in Jesus' name, amen. I want to preach this morning from these verses in John chapter number 21. I want to preach on this thought, the return of a backslider. Now, there are big questions that we can find throughout the Scriptures. Uh, There are very important questions that are asked throughout the Word of God. In Job chapter number 14 and verse 14, the question is asked, If a man dies, shall he live again? In Mark chapter 8 and verse number 36, it says, what, uh, what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? In Matthew chapter, or James chapter number 4 and verse number 14, it asks the question, For what is your life? And then in Matthew chapter 27 and verse number 22, uh, the question was asked, what shall I do then with Jesus, which is called the Christ? Those are some big questions that are asked, and there are many others that are asked throughout the Word of God. But I'm glad that every question that has ever been asked, there's always been an answer from the Word of the Lord. But I believe the biggest of all questions to the Christian this morning is the question that was posed by Jesus to Simon Peter when he asked him, Simon, son of Jonas, 
lovest thou me more than these? I believe that this is a question that has been asked, and that the question is a question of loyalty and a question of devotion and a question of dedication. In other words, Jesus looked at Simon and said, Simon, do you love me? Well, what a question that was asked. And we can see who is asking the question, and we can see uh, the person to whom he is putting this question to. And of course, we know the story that the events uh, that led to the question started just a few days earlier, the night that Jesus was betrayed. He met with his disciples to observe the the Passover. And there he startled them with the announcement in Matthew 26 and verse 21, one of you shall betray me. And while the other disciples realized their own weaknesses, they asked, Lord, is it I? I mean, that's what they began to ask, Lord, is it I? And uh, Peter, in his characteristic that he always is, it is in and boasting ways uh, that he said that he would never do such a thing as that. It was then that Jesus told uh, Peter that he would deny him three times before uh, the rooster crowed, amen? And Peter assured the Lord that he would be faithful even to the point of death, that he would even go to die for him. But Jesus had said, you would deny me three times. And then sure enough, the night that Jesus was arrested and put through the mockery of a trial, as the trial proceeded, uh, Peter stood on the fringes of the crowd as an observer. And three times uh, he was asked about his relationship uh, uh, with the Lord Jesus. And three times uh, he denied uh, even knowing uh, who Jesus was. Amen. And just as he made that third denial, uh, the third time that he denied Jesus about that time, uh, the cock crowed. Amen. Uh, And amid bitter tears, Peter realized uh, Uh, What we all need to realize, uh, that the Lord knows us better than we know ourselves. Amen. Uh, Peter thought, I will never deny him. I'll go with him all the way. Uh, I'll even die with him. Uh, But I'm glad, praise God, uh, the Lord knew what Peter was going to do. He knows what you're going to do, even if you don't even know what you're going to do. Amen. Uh, I want you to know this morning, that is where we find uh, the story beginning. Then, of course, we see that Jesus was crucified and they buried him, but thank God three days later he rose uh, again. And after the resurrection, Jesus appeared to his disciples uh, several times. And it was after his second appearance that Peter said to his friends, I go a fishing. I got to thinking about that. He first said, I would never deny you. I'll die for you. Now Jesus died, but thank God he's rose from the dead, and Peter has seen him. But then he says, I'm going to fishing. And uh, his friends also replied, we're going with you. I thought about that this morning. What you do has an effect on those around you. Here Peter so boldly said, I'll never deny him, but yet he did three times. Now he's going back to his old habits, the back to the fishing, amen. And his people with him said, we're going with you. We'll also go with you. And off they went to the Sea of Galilee. Now, of course, when they went back and they went fishing that night, the Bible tells us that they toiled all night long and caught nothing. But there was a stranger standing on the shore that said, how have you done? They said, we ain't caught a thing. This is Ricky Easter interpretation. We haven't caught a thing. Cast your nets on the other side for a drop. And Brother Ray, they nevertheless, they cast their nets. And the Bible said that they caught so many fish that it almost break their nets, almost sunk their boats, amen. 
And then John said, it's the Lord. It's the Lord. Well, the Bible said that Simon Peter jumped into the water because he knew that he had done wrong. Amen. He was a sinful man. And so they get to the shore, and there Jesus is on the shore with a, with a, a fish baking on coals of fire. And uh, he asked them to take something to eat, amen. And earlier, Jesus had had the Lord's Supper with them before his uh, crucifixion. Now he's having the Lord's breakfast with them, amen. And so he has fixed them something uh, uh, there over in an open fire, and Jesus prepared for them a meal. Now, as he dined with his disciples, and after that he dined with them that morning, uh, that's when he began to talk to Simon Peter. And that's when he came to him with those questions. Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? And Peter said, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. And Jesus said unto him, Feed my lambs. Now, Jesus asked the second time, do you love me? He said, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. And this time Jesus said, Feed my sheep. And then he asked him the third time, Do you love me? And he said, Yea, Lord, thou knowest all things, and thou knowest that I love thee. And he said again, Feed my sheep. I believe this morning this is where uh, Peter is coming back and the Lord is dealing with him and Peter is rededicating his life to the Lord, amen. After his betrayal and, or his denial and forsaking and going back to what he used to do, now the Lord is bringing him back in. The Lord is bringing him and giving him an opportunity one more time to get right and, and to do what God would have him to do. Here we find a restoration. In this, he reaffirms his love for and his devotion to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I believe this is an example of a man whose fellowship with God has been recovered. After his sin, Peter must have felt like he was in no man's land. Can you imagine how he felt? I, I can't imagine when after the third denial, the rooster crows. Jesus looks at him. And the Bible said that Peter went out and wept bitterly. He goes out thinking, I'm a failure. I have really messed up. It's all over for me. The Lord surely will never have anything else to do with me. Remember, Peter has walked with Jesus for three over three years. He has seen all the miracles that Jesus has done. Any time that there was something uh, major going to happen, he always took with them Peter, James, and John. They were kind of the inner circle, I guess you could say. But there Peter was. He's denied the Lord. He's gone back. But now the Lord is bringing him back and restoring that faith and fellowship with him. Amen. Well, I'm glad God don't give up on us just because we mess up. And guess what? All of us from this pew all the way around to the end of that one, we've all messed up. And guess what? You are not through messing up. I wish it was we were through messing up, don't y'all? But I'm glad God loves us. Brother Chris sung about it. They were singing about the love of God. I don't know why he loved me like he does. But I'm glad Peter must have felt the same way. I don't know why that he would have anything else to do with me. I denied him and they crucified him. But oh, I'm glad Jesus brought him back. Amen. Oh, Peter must have felt like he was no good anymore. He probably assumed that he didn't deserve to be an apostle anymore. But Jesus had a different attitude. He sought Peter out. He drew him unto himself. Amen. And three times he got Peter to confess that he loved him. Amen. And as a result of that denial, 
Peter had not lost his relationship with Jesus, but he had broken his fellowship with him. Amen? If he had lost his salvation, the question would have been of one of faith. He would have said, Simon, son of Jonas, believest thou me? But he didn't say that. He said, do you love me? Lovest thou me? Amen? And that question is a crucial question for all of us this morning. Do you love Jesus? Do you really love Jesus? Oh, it is our love that Jesus wants. And every one of us is capable of giving our love to him. I read where there was an African pastor that said, my people do not know how to read and write, but they do know how to love. You don't have to be educated to know how to love somebody. Amen? As a matter of fact, it's not brains God wants. He wants your heart, your love, your devotion to him. Amen? That's exactly what he wants. D.O. Moody said, there are thousands of men who would be more useful in God's kingdom if they would wake up to the fact that it is brain, not brains God wants. He wants your heart. He wants your heart. Some of us are like Peter. You have known better days with the Lord than you have right now. And what Peter did is what you need to do. You just need to rededicate your life to him Give your all to him once again and affirm your love and your devotion to Jesus Christ. Now, this tells me that Jesus not only wants our love, but it tells us the kind of love that he wants. It's a kind of love. He wants a devotion from each one of his children. Amen. And that's exactly what we'll need to do if we're going to return from our backslidden condition. Now, I want you to notice three things real quick. First of all, Jesus wants to, us to love him supremely. Supremely. Amen. The question to Simon was, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than thee? Now, there's been a lot of question about more than thee. What is more than thee? What's Jesus asking about? Well, there's been a lot of different suggestions. Some have suggested that it referred to the boats and the nets uh, that Peter and his companions had just left. Do you love me more than those old boats and those nets that you have? Do you love me more than you love the things that you used to do? Amen. Amen. Do you love me more than the old way of life? You see, he was a fisherman all of his life. That's all he had known is fishing. And he said, I go a fishing. And Jesus is saying, do you love me more than thee? Could have been he was talking about that. Amen. And uh, so that could have been one situation. It could also be that Jesus was saying, Peter, do you love me more? than your old way of life? Do you love me more than your old profession? Do you love me more than you love the recreation of fishing? Do you love me more than these? I wonder this morning if Jesus asked you, and he is asking me and you this morning, do you love me more than these? Amen. It's a good question, isn't it? How much do you love him? Others have suggested the more than these referred to the other disciples. <laughs> he may have been saying, Simon, do you love me more than you love these men? Well, you have to remember that among those men was Andrew, his brother. Amen. And James and John were his former fishing partners. And they were also close companions. But Jesus said, do you love me more? He's talking about, he wants a love that is supreme to everything. 
if we don't love him more than anything, we don't love him like we should. Amen. Maybe he was saying, Simon, do you love me more than you love your brother? His brother was among the crowd. Do you love me more than you love your business associate? Do you love me more than you love your close friends? Oh, listen, do you love me more than these? Amen. I don't know exactly. We can't be sure, but there was one thing for sure. What Jesus is saying, Simon, do you love me more than anything or anybody? I'm going to say to all of us this morning, myself included, if we don't love him supremely, we need to. Amen. We need to dedicate our life to Jesus. That's the kind of devotion he wants. And may I say that's the only kind he'll be satisfied with. Amen. General William Booth, the founder of the Salvation Army, was asked the secret of his success. And he said, well, I guess if I could look at anything that would say would be a secret to my success, it is simply this. He said, ever since the day that I got the poor of London on my heart and a vision of what Jesus can do, God has had all there was of William Booth. He said, if there is any unsurrendered area of my life, to Jesus, I don't know it. That's the secret. Amen. I know we ain't going to shout much on this. because I'm afraid we love things a lot more sometimes than we love Jesus. Do you love me more than these? Amen. We should love Christ supremely. That's exactly what we should do. I read where... Bill Borden was an heir to the Borden milk fortune. And he got saved and he dedicated his life to Christ. And this was his motto. He said, no reservation, no regret, and no retreat. Bill Borden went to the mission field and ended up contracting some type of disease and ended up dying. But he gave his all to Jesus. Amen. We need to love him supremely. And we all forgot right now. I got news, it ain't gonna get no better. I know people say, Oh, I just love the Lord. Sometimes I want to go, liar. <laughs> liar, you lying. Amen. Well, hallelujah, anyhow. Love him supremely. Number two, we are to love him actively. Now, three times Jesus said, do you love me? Three times Peter said, you know that I love you. Three times Jesus said, one is he said, feed my lambs. Twice he said, feed my sheep. In other words, if you love me, you're going to do something for me. Amen. Somebody said, I wonder why he said lambs and sheep. Well, some, one writer said, the lambs represent the little children who need to be taught and trained. And the sheep represent those who are mature and older to continue on. Amen. He was saying, I want you to go to work. If you love me, go to work. Live for me. Do something. Amen. You know, we not only speak lies, we sing lies. We do. We sing sweet hour prayer. About five, ten minutes a day is all we can handle. We sing all we're Christian soldiers and wait to be drafted into his service. We sing all oh, for a thousand tongues to tell, and we don't even use the one we have. We sing there shall be showers of blessings, and we don't even go to church when it rains. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But I love Jesus. Yeah, you do. Sure you do. Bless me the tie that binds. The least little offense uh, will sever our relationship. We sing, serve the Lord with gladness, and gripe about all that we have to do. 
We sing, I love to tell the story, and then we never mention him at all. We sing, we're marching to Zion, but fail to march to worship or to Sunday school. We sing standing on the promises when most of the time we're just sitting on the premises. Can I say this morning, the Lord is not interested in just mere words. If you love him, it'll show up in your life. If you really love him, he'll show up every day of your life. If you love me, love supremely. Love actively. And then lastly, love openly. He wants us to love him openly. The last time that Jesus asked that question, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? The Bible said that Peter was grieved. So I said, I wonder why he was grieved, because three times he had denied Jesus just a few days before. He had warned himself by the fire uh, in the outer courtyard where Jesus went through the mockery of a trial. He had three opportunities to pledge his allegiance to Jesus. But three times he denied him. The questions brought back the memory of his failures. It had grieved him at the moment. And now it grieved him at the memory of it. And sometimes grief is the price that we pay for disappointing somebody that we dearly love. And he had disappointed the Lord. But Peter said, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. You see, the fact is, Jesus does know all things. Amen. Somebody says, well, why did Jesus keep asking him? Why did he keep asking, do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? Why did he keep asking him over and over? Because Jesus wanted to hear it, and Peter needed to say it. Amen? Peter needed to say it. Hey, it's like this. No matter how many times in the past a man may have told his wife, I love you, it doesn't suffice for today. She wants to hear it again and again. Amen? Now, my wife and I have been married almost 47 years. And in those 47 years, I'm sure that I have at least twice a week, and no doubt more, told my wife, I love you. That means almost 4,700 times I have told that woman, I love you. Shouldn't that be enough? But it's not. She still wants to hear it. Hey, I'm the I'm same way. I still like for her to say, I love you. Amen. I love you. But listen, uh, that's what Jesus wants. We want, he wants us to tell him, hey, Lord, I love you. I love you. Hey, does God hear us when we pray? Well, don't you think he would hear you when you say, Lord, I just want to tell you I love you. Amen. I read where there was a man and wife that had been married for 70 years. And on her dying bed, the wife said to the husband, tell me one more time that you love me. Oh, listen, that's why the way love is. Love, it craves, it thrives on expression. It is possible that no greater kindness could have ever been shown than Peter to say to Jesus, Lord, I love you. Amen. Oh, that I love you. Oh, I, I thought about this and I'm done. I read about a preacher of years and years gone by. He had a small room in the attic of his home where when he really got burdened, he would climb up in that attic and he would pray. And they knew, the family knew that when he went in that room, he was not to be bothered on any, for any reason. One day he came in, he was really burdened down, and so he climbed the steps up to the attic and opened the door, and then he walked in, he closed the door, and he got on his knees and was praying. In a few minutes, he heard the door swing open, and he looked up, and there stood his little girl. And she was standing there with a look on her face like, I know I've done wrong. 
She says, Daddy, I know we're not supposed to bother you while you're here. But she said, you've been so busy lately. I just wanted to come and tell you that I love you. <laughs> that big old preacher grabbed that little girl and hugged her and said, I love you too, honey. And she went on out just as fast as she came in. He went back to praying and he said, Lord, with tears coming down his face, he said, Lord, I want to say I'm sorry. I've just been so busy lately that I failed to tell you how much I love you. Oh, Jesus wants us to tell him that we love him. He wants us to know and he wants us to show our love for him. Amen. Oh, listen, he wants us to show our devotion and our love through our commitment and through our confession. You see, on the cross of Christ, Jesus forgave his enemies. But at the river or that seashore that morning, he forgave his friends. Oh, oh my. May I say today that there is not a believer whose fellowship with God is exactly what it should be. I know that I'm not 100% everything I ought to be. Amen, but I certainly want to be. And he wants us to be totally devoted to him, love him supremely, love him actively, love him openly. Amen. Love him with all of your heart. You say, preacher, I know I failed the Lord. All you have to do is do what Peter did. Peter just came back to Jesus, and, and Jesus just dealt with the situation at hand, and thank God restored him back, and, and then Peter became one of the greatest preachers ever. Amen. After he got restored, and, and after that, the Holy Ghost came, and he, the first sermon he ever preached, what was it, 3,000? Got saved? <laughs> do you think God had favor on him? I do. Even after he denied him, God brought him back and restored him. I don't care where you are this morning. There's always hope for restoration. There's always hope. As long as God is dealing with your heart, there's always hope to get back to where you need to be. Amen. Amen. People that have got away from God, they don't have to stay away from God. It's not God's will that you stay away, but he wants to restore you back unto him. When David did his awful sin, and David cried, Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. This morning, I don't know where you are, but I want to ask you this question that the Lord asked Simon. Do you love me more than these? What are those things that you love more than him? Oh, this morning, that's where you need to come to him. That's when you need to get to him. And let God do a work in your heart today. Love him supremely. Love him actively and openly. Father, I thank you today for the word of God. For I'm glad that we can see in Simon Peter a man that walked with Jesus, a man that was close with Jesus for over three years. But yet we see that he even in a weak moment failed Jesus. But I'm glad he was not a failure forever, but I'm glad there was restoration made because of God's love and Christ's love for Simon Peter. I'm glad this morning, Lord, that no matter where anybody is today, God, you love them, and you want to see them restored back into fellowship with you. God, please speak to hearts. Please let them know, Lord, that they don't have to stay in a backslidden condition. But they can come back and be renewed and restored in Christ. And Father, we'll thank you. And I pray that there's somebody in the building that's lost. That, Lord, they could come to Jesus and be saved. Because he died for their sin. He paid their debt in full at Calvary. And all they must do is come and accept him as their Savior. We'll thank you for what you do in Jesus' name. 
Amen. What number, brother? 177. As we're standing, God spoke to your heart. Just think about that question. He's asking it to you. He's looking at me and he says, Ricky, do you love me more than these? Do you love me more than your family? Do you love me more than your church family? Do you love me more than your possessions? Do you love me more than your recreation? Do you love me more than anything? And only I can answer that question. Only you can answer that question while we sing. Will you ever love him? How about just surrendering all this morning? All to Jesus. We're going to sing one more verse. You just mind God this morning. Do you love him more than anything? Let's bow our heads just for one moment. I was thinking about that verse of Scripture. In Romans chapter 5, verse number 8, But God commendeth His love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. God commended His love toward us. I wonder this morning, are we commending our love toward Him? Do you love Jesus? That's the question of the hour. That is the question of our lives. Do you love Jesus more? More. More than what? More than anything. More than anybody. More than anywhere. We must love him supreme. God, thank you for the service this morning. I pray, God, that you would help us. God, may the word of the Lord, uh, God, may we meditate upon it. May we begin to realize where we are, what we need to do, Lord, that we would love you with all of our heart, with all of our mind, with all of our strength, with all of our soul. To put you first in everything, God, may you help us this morning. And we'll thank you, we'll praise you for what you do in Jesus' name. Man.